I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a test question on limits. You need to evaluate limit when x approaches infinity for square root of x square plus cx minus square root of x square plus dx. You can pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now whenever you have a function with these square roots, the best way to find limits is to rationalize. So the strategy is to rationalize. Now I'll see how to rationalize this function. Sometimes you feel as if you know there should be a something over something so that you could rationalize numerator or denominator. But if the case is as given to you, in that case think there is one in the denominator, right? So take this expression as square root of x square plus cx minus square root of x square plus dx divided by let us say 1 right so if you see like this you can clearly understand that you need to rationalize the denominator the numerator right so you have to rationalize the numerator right so let's rationalize the numerator that is to multiply and divide by the conjugate of the numerator. So that will be x square plus cx plus x square plus dx divided by square root of x square plus cx plus square root of x square plus dx. Now you are multiplying and dividing by the same factor and therefore effectively you are multiplying by 1 so it is the same question which you are answering, right? So, it is the limit of the given question. Now, the numerator could be simplified. It is kind of a minus b times a plus b. So, what we get here is a square minus b square, right? So, that is what happens, right? So, you know, a minus b times a plus b is equals to a square minus b square. In our case, the whole expression here is a and that one is b, right? So when you multiply a minus b times a plus b, you get this whole square. So what you get here is square of x square minus cx minus square of the other term, right? Now divide by, you need to multiply these by 1. So what you get is x square plus cx plus square root of x square plus dx, right? Now square root and square, they kind of cancel out. So what you have in the numerator is x square, I mean this was plus, right? x square plus cx minus, let's open this bracket, so you get x square minus dx, right? divided by what we have here is square root of now in the denominator at this stage we can take x square common so let me take x square common then we get 1 plus c over x right and similarly here we'll take x square common so we get 1 plus d over x why d over x dx divided by x square will be d over x correct now look at it as far as the numerator is concerned, we are left with x square x ter square terms cancel. We have cx minus dx, right? And in the denominator, we have within square root x square 1 plus c over x. Now, I can take x square outside the square root. Now, what is square root of x square? It is absolute value of x, right? So, we get absolute value of x within square root. We have 1 plus c over x plus again absolute value of x and within the brackets, I mean within the square root, we have 1 plus d over x. Is it okay? So this is what we get. Now, I can take x common in the numerator, so I have limit, x approaches infinity. So if I take x common in the numerator, we get c minus d and in the denominator, 
what we have here is absolute x and absolute x. We could take that common, right? Now, remember one more thing. If x is approaching infinity, what is absolute x? Absolute x will be x, correct? So, uh, let me again redefine absolute x. I'm just using the space to define it. As you know, absolute x is equals to positive value of x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and is negative x when x is less than 0, correct? So, since we are approaching positive infinity, a couple of things happen here. Since we are approaching positive infinity, absolute x approaches will be plus x. c over x will approach 0, b over x will also approach 0. Do you get the idea? So, what really happens is, as you approach infinity, then we are first simplifying the denominator. Absolute x approaches x, so we have x here. And within square root, I have square root of 1 plus kind of 0. Let me write 0 here. Because c over x approaches when x is very large, c divided by large number will be approaching 0. Right? Similarly, the other expression will be x within square root 1 plus 0. Because when x is large, when, when x is approaching infinity, c over x will approach 0 and d over x will also approach 0. So we replace them with this 0 at this stage. Right? So I have taken this up a step before, but anyway, you could uh, first do this and then that. Now, we could rewrite this as limit x approaches infinity. The numerator is x times c minus d and the denominator basically is 2x. You see x plus x is 2x. Correct? So when x approaches infinity, we have denominator as 2x since 1 plus 0 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, right? And now you can cancel these x values and what do you get? You get a constant c minus t, right? Divided by 2. So what you get here is, is equals to c minus t divided by 2 as your answer. So the limit of this function when x approaches infinity is is difference of c and d divided by 2. Right? So we could write our answer as c minus d divided by 2. I hope these steps are absolutely clear. It is a very general solution for the given type of questions, right? Given type of questions. And I hope that helps. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Feel free to post questions and put some likes if you like. Thank you and all the best.